Hi, I'm Mark Leghorn and welcome to the Photographer Academy. And today we're talking folders, galleries and settings on SmugMug. The core to any business is organisation and that's exactly what a SmugMug website does for us. It allows us to organise ourselves in the best workflow that suits us. It gives us folders and folders can contain other folders and in those folders as well can contain other folders and galleries and pages. And then the galleries allow us to show our photography off in a unique way or in a universal way, depending on how we want the look and the feel to that specific gallery to look like. And then we also get custom settings so we can go in and totally control the user experience. SmugMug is very, very powerful using the kind of the core element of organization. And it's important this film to get right to the heart of it. So without delay, let's get into it. So before we get into making folders and galleries and all the things that are going to be contained within them, uh, we should see how they interact on the site itself. And just here on the home page, uh, an example of using folders and galleries really is contained uh, with our first kind of build of this site. So if I click onto portrait, it uh, instantly goes off to what was built was a simple gallery on here. But if I just hover above commercial here, you can see that we have a drop down uh, navigation which is referring to food, fashion and places. Each one of these is an individual gallery. So the quickest way to show you how it's kind of coming together is if we just click in to organize and when we're here you can see that the commercial header that we see in there contains three galleries and SmugMug basically consists of three things a page, a gallery and a folder. A folder is just like on your computer where it's kind of meant to store stuff. A page is something that you read and will possibly have links off to other places, whereas a gallery is somewhere that you kind of look at photographs. So that's that's it in a nutshell. So um, if we're in the commercial kind of category here, we can see it's the folder containing three galleries. However, the portrait gallery is on its own. So you can see below the Mark Cleghorn here, that the commercial there's these kind of little toggles with folders but each of the wedding and the portrait uh, is looking different so in other words they are just a gallery by themselves so what I'm planning to do with this section initially to just demonstrate the folders and galleries is to uh, change uh, the link to the portrait gallery into a link to a folder that will contain um, groups of different kind of topics within portrait photography itself. It'll make sense, I promise you. So back up to the Mark Cleghorn. At this stage, if I click on Create, you can see I've got an option here for Gallery Page and Folder. In this case, I want Folder. The first thing to do is obviously name it. I'm just going to call this Portraits. Uh, it's important to put in your metadata uh, description here. This really explains about what the gallery is. Um, take the time to do it. Um, because everything is really used within search engine optimization as it crawls around your website and obviously you want everything you can to be found as well as your photography especially if you're running a business and as far as the uh, keywords are concerned as well you need to make sure that they are kind of set I tend to put a lot of keywords in with the images but you need to make sure that every folder and every gallery that you are putting together also contains um, things that will associate it so they can be found with searches so child and children, uh, family. Featured image is a rule of thumb. If you haven't uploaded any images up until now, you won't be able to use that facility. But as we do have a few anyway, I can just go in and click on to one of the photographs and that will show up as the front image on the folder itself. And you can see already uh, below here we've got the custom URL. That smug mug has put that in position for us. It automatically types that in. Um, I can go in there and make my own custom as well if I want to actually type in whatever I want to here. As far as the security and privacy is concerned, so I don't want to hide the folder away. If it was unlisted, the only way to find it is from a link that you may have or if you've linked to it in some way. But it can't just be visualized on the site. The private um, means that you've hidden it away from view fully and even if a client has got a link to a particular gallery or folder if you um, make that folder or gallery private uh, it no longer kind of shows up so uh, that's a kind of a cool thing obviously if I was going to hide it away I wanted to put some security into it then I can actually add a password in here as well and of course at this stage I do want web searchable and I do want smugmug searchable as well create 
So now we have, uh, we can see here, our portrait folder. Now within the portrait folder, I want to go ahead and create some galleries, but I could go in and create more folders, in fact. You can go five deep with folders in total. So as many galleries as you want within a folder, as many images as you want within a gallery, uh, as many images as you want on the whole site, of course, but you are limited to five folders deep. The only reason at present that I'm using the stack in is either for weddings, where if I'm putting them into different years, and if I've got a commercial client, uh, I've put a few in here for now, but Blue Bridal Design is one of our uh, yearly clients, and we've been photographing them some 20 years, but um, this is a great way to be able to instantly, for them to go in and find the images, as well as for me to go and find images if I need to re-download them and so on. Okay, back to portraits. So within here, I want to make up some galleries. So I'm going to click Create, and a gallery. And at this stage, obviously, we need to give it its name. So we're just going to put children. And the description, once more, would be written in here. Studio and location photography of children by Mark Pegworn. So a nice, simple description to it making sure all my spelling errors are corrected, which they usually are. Uh, studio, there, there we go with it. Uh, as far as the keywords, the, exactly the same thing again. It would be studio, oops, children, and you get the hang of that. Again, make sure you're filling them in though. And as far as the customer URL, you can see it's filled that into children, and then into security and privacy. Once more, I do want it found um, because this is a part of my website. This is the influencing them coming to actually look at my work and so on. So I don't want to really change much on here except go and give a maximum of a times two vision. If I allow them to view the original, it means that if I did have any watermarking on the photographs at all, um, so applied through SmugMug, I should say, not actually obviously as the upload. So if I already had the watermark on the images when I uploaded them, um, that defeats the object with SmugMug, by the way. But if I'd already applied a watermark to it, obviously the watermark is on the image full stop. You can't do anything about that. But what we can do within SmugMug is uh, apply a watermark in uh, a custom one as well. So either a proof or a custom in here. But if I click onto original, even if I've applied the watermark into a photograph, the original exists because this is what the image would be printed from. Um, so that's key to remember to always make sure it's on something other than original. I do want to put on the right click protected. So that means when they click onto a photograph, um, they can't then uh, just save the image or download the image as it is. And we're going to leave off the watermarking, but as I said, you can either kind of put in a basic one. Um, so if I wanted a basic proof, I would just switch the watermarking to on. If I wanted to have a custom watermark, I would just choose one of the ones that I've made up prior. Um, hide the owner. No, I don't want to do that. Upload key. Upload key is if you want somebody else to be able to upload into that gallery. So it could be an assistant. Um, if you're not selling your photography, if this is not your website, if it's just a friend's gallery that you're collecting images from from a party, you can um, use an upload key there and then you can uh, give a, a kind of a link to that gallery and the code, of course, to be able to go in there and do it. Social. Um, yes, I want them all to be uh, available to have social comments. Uh, as well as to share and allow likes. Uh, the comments you have to approve um, within your account settings with that, um, but otherwise uh, it's a great way to actually get people talking about your photography. Because this is just a gallery of my kind of site, as it were, I don't want to sell any of the images that are visible in these particular galleries. Remember, this is just to show off my work. So I'm going to click that to off. Next stage is the appearance, and this is really where you kind of make the gallery look what you want it to look like. And uh, there's many options here in gallery styles. Uh, Smug Mug gives you the, the default, which is the squares down the side and then the big image to the right. Thumb, a thumbnail speaks for itself. It's a collection of all images, kind of in really small sizes. The collage landscape and collage portrait uh, are very interesting uh, looks because they basically mix all the images up in different heights. So they kind of mix the landscape and the upright images and give you a whole different kind of style in a photograph. 
based obviously if you're in a landscape mode in a horizontal styling if you're working in portrait mode here so in other words it's in a vertical styling how they kind of mix all the images together journal gives you a, a kind of a big image running down the page the one after each other a little bit kind of a, like a blog post um, element and the slideshow speaks for itself obviously you can apply a slideshow to it I'm just going to click onto the smug mug for now and um, then the only other things are to kind of work out how we want them to be viewed so I want them to be sort by file name you could actually do by date uploaded so in other words if you want to keep it fresh all the time the image is right at the front you might want to keep uh, date uploaded here or date taken uh, and then work it in ascending or descending order depending on how you want to run it so I'm going to keep it unto file name for now um, but because this is a viewable gallery as it were I don't want people to see my camera information that's different if I'm having a a gallery uh, that I've kind of put together from a workshop that I want the photographers who come on a workshop with me to be able to see the settings the lens the camera uh, and exposure levels and so on uh, so I'm just going to click the camera information off for this um, website gallery file name I want that off as well that's off by default um, but if it was a gallery that I was using for a client to order from I tend to actually have the file name on so we can talk about the same photograph um, if they're ringing us up for any queries and so on um, slideshow uh, this gives them the option to have uh, the kind of the slideshow look even without the, the page being designed in that way they can just click a button and then the, the slideshow will kind of start and then as far as the enable map features are concerned I'm going to switch that off sharpening of course this only applies to the display copies here it doesn't affect your original file at all so don't worry about that and as far as the quick settings uh, this is something that we want to make up now uh, why because all those information all those little things that we just did a minute ago I want to apply to lots of galleries as we're going through it so I'm going to save as a quick setting here but I do have the option to go and choose one of the other ones that I uh, I've already got in place so I'm just going to go into one and then gal that's to kind of tell me this is just a gallery for the site as such really you can obviously put whatever you want in I'm just going to click create so let's go and build a few more galleries to go into the portrait uh, folders you can see here now so I'm just going to click create and gallery this time I'm just going to type in family quickly down to the quick settings go for one gal and then I'm ready straight away let's create once more going to create another one a gallery it's going to be women down to quick settings once more and just go into gallery now let's say I wanted a different look and feel to this one even though I've applied a quick setting to it I can still go up even though I've applied the quick setting here I can go in and change it to whatever I want to do and it still applies all the other things that I've put in place from the quick setting itself I'm going to click create there and let's just do one final one so once more gallery do men quick setting again here we'll go to gallery one go back to appearance and we'll just click on to the um, what look should we give we'll give the collage portrait and once more create and then we're ready to upload images and so on so all I need to do here is click into each one of the galleries click onto the upload photos this is obviously the men so let me go find my folder of men photographs I'm just going to click into here and I'm just going to drag and drop them in there's lots of ways to um, upload into smug mug and remember you don't need to reduce the file sizes down at all uh, we've made some smaller file sizes as well just to kind of uh, help the quicker up upload here obviously it all depends on your broadband speed um, but as a rule you can use your full res images smug mug go ahead then and uh, make duplicate copies of them in different sizes uh, they never affect the original so you can kind of be um, uh, co uh, confident that nothing's really going to um, kind of affect your original images up there
OK, let's have a quick look before we just go and load some more images in a minute. But you can see that uh, there's some little kind of blank squares here, and this is called processing. As I mentioned, when we upload images to SmugMug, it makes multiple copies. It makes multiple copies so it can be seen in different sizes. So the user experience for the client or for the viewer coming to the site is quick. That's the key thing. And uh, remember that uh, a SmugMug site is uh, fully kind of portable, whether it's on a tablet or a phone and things really. So it's maximized for speed. Right, I'm just going to click on to women and once more click on to the upload. So let's go and find our women images. I'm just selecting a few of those for now. Uploading them again. And it really does help if you organize yourself before you get going. Um, because it's going to save save you time soon. So already while it's uploading images here, I'm getting the next set of photographs ready to up upload into the family section. Whilst we're seeing the upload here, it's good to mention that if you're by mistake uploading a duplicate file, um, SmugMug's default is skip duplicates. There's some other options here to override that. We'll talk about that on the next upload. So let's click done here. See those coming in. Click into family go back and get our next series. Helps if I click on the upload of course. Dragging those in again. Um, so as I was saying, um, we've got options here. It's allow duplicates. That will um, just add a, a new name to the uh, end of the file. And then it will replace duplicates. So if, for instance, I've done some work on a photograph and I wanted to re-upload it, I would just kind of click on the replace duplicates there and it would do that for me. So that's our basics into uh, building the galleries. I've got that children one here and I wanted to show you that I'm not going to upload the same images again because if you remember we already have them uploaded here and what I'm going to do in fact is drag them into the, the folder of children so even though at present they're in this gallery I'm going to move them across into the child gallery And then as you can see, SmugMug is just moving those files across. There's another one here, so let's move that into Family. And now there is nothing in the portrait gallery here, this one, the original one at all. So I could leave it there, but I'm just going to delete it for now. So I'm just going to use the trash bin at the top. And there's no real need to delete anything um, within SmugMug at all, because you remember you're not limited to the amount of images that you have online or storage at all. Um, you are limited as far as the file is concerned. We can only upload a JPEG file or a PNG file. We can't upload a RAW file or a TIFF file. Um, we can only use a JPEG file for the kind of the use of the site and storage and sales. So that's key to remember here. But you're not um, kind of withheld the uh, maximum amount of images. They don't kind of reduce them down in size. You haven't got to reduce them down in size before you upload. As I said, there's no real reason to um, kind of delete that bin. However, that is quite an important gallery name, portrait. And I'd like to kind of free that up again. So I'm just going to delete it. And this is going to say, uh, are you sure you want to delete it, all the images? Well, there's no images in there anyway, but it would delete the images as well. Are you sure? And it's delete forever. And yep, I'm going to be doing that. But as I said, there's no real reason for you to be doing it, uh, except on the kind of the workflow and the organizational front there. I want to keep that nice and clean. So let's go and have a little look at the galleries that we've just uploaded there. So let's press done. Now, if we come across, you can see here a minute, that we've lost our category called portrait on the navigation bar. That's because I just deleted that uh, gallery that was accessed on here. So I need to go back in here and just do a quick bit of uh, customization. So clicking on to customize, customize site. And you can see that uh, even though it's showing I'm on the home page and it's in blue so that anything that I would change is on here, when I kind of uh, go above onto the navigation, it's in red, which means it is the entire site. So just clicking onto that, just going into links, and uh, it is there, por a portrait, but I just need to reassign it to a new place. So choose a page. I'm going to pick one. And now I'm going into clicking onto portraits. And by just clicking onto the outer folder, it will then act as that drop down menu. So press done. So you can see the only reason that we lost that heading 
was because we lost its association. That's very, very smart, a smoke mode, because originally it was just going to one gallery. So if I wanted the drop down like we have in the commercial here, I just need to go into the um, customize again. And what I should have done on the links part on portraits, I should have just include folder contents. That's key there. If I click the on part now and press done, it, you can start to see now it has the drop at uh, the drop down menu. Let me just uh, publish that. Remember, you don't have to publish each time. You can save for later on. Uh, but for now, I want to publish it to make it go live. And so now you can see we've got that lovely access into the galleries. So this is the smug mug default as far as the gallery styling is concerned. If we just uh, hover over there and we go to women, we change the look, didn't we, as far as this. This is the uh, landscape collage. If we go to men, we have the portrait collage. You can see the difference there. And if we went to the children, you can see it's still in the smug mug styling in here. If I just go to Customize and Gallery Style, I can move this into Journal. Well, let's move it into, let's do Journal first. And this kind of uh, puts one image on top of each other going through it. Very, very big images, of course. Um, but let's say we wanted to put it on a slideshow instead. We can go to Customize here. Gallery Style again. Just click onto Slideshow. So when you're in a gallery, you have the quick option here to actually go into the customize, and it allows you to do many things, including set prices, choose a new site design, gallery settings, and so on with it. Uh, it al allows you your kind of full navigation of what you want to do, either with the site or with a gallery. So to finish this film, we're going to go a little bit smart. So we're going to click on to the commercial and fashion. And if we look at this uh, here, you can see there's, there's a, a few kind of really nice photographs and so on with it. But I want to um, associate this gallery to anything that I upload that I put a special word in with. So I'm going to make this gallery into a smart gallery. And to do that, I just go into Customize and I go into Gallery Settings. And then if you just wander down here, just below Appearance, you can see the Smart Rules. And by clicking onto the Smart Rules, it opens up the Smart Gallery option. If I click onto the Setup, at this stage it takes us to a brand new window, as you can see. But I want to include a special keyword. So for this one will be Fashion. And this is uh, applied as a keyword for me uh, at Source. So in other words, I'm, I'm doing this um, with the images before they're being processed from the raw file into the JPEG or on the JPEG themselves post-production kind of they're being added in so now this gallery will look at the whole of my website the smug mug website and find any photographs that might have that keyword of fashion so if I click on the click refresh here you can see we've got more images um, five images there in all and now that is going to be applied to that gallery so even though they're somewhere else these images are in the men's gallery but they're now going to be associated as well with the fashion gallery so it's one image but now visible in two places because I've told it the gallery to be smart let's return to gallery and then if we just kind of scroll down here we can see that it's added in those five images here at the bottom of, of the guys and if I went up to the portrait and the men category we can see that these images are still there so they haven't moved them at all they still exist in that one place and that is it really that's the kind of the beginning and the end to getting going with folders and galleries uh, and how you kind of adjust the settings to get the most out of them as well as to work smart with a bit of workflow so I'm Mark Cleghorn for the Photographer Academy hope you enjoyed it see you next time bye bye